squirmy, scratchy, family not getting clean? Get Charmin Ultra Strong. Go get them. It just cleans better. With a diamond weave texture, your family can use less while still getting clean. Goodbye, itchy squirm. Hello, clean bottom. <laughs> <laughs> we all go. Why not enjoy the go with Charmin? At Hampton Law, our primary goal is to provide non-traditional yet effective solutions and redefine the approach to client legal concerns. As your trusted legal advisor, we believe in sophisticated, personalized services that eliminate the confusion and complexity sometimes associated with legal matters. Our high standard for client care and concern, coupled with our extensive legal knowledge and skills, make Hampton Law a resource focused on the protection of the client's interest and overall goals. We value our clients and truly enjoy working with them. Visit thamptonlaw.com to conveniently schedule an appointment online. Tamika Hampton, Esquire, 1631 Rock Springs Road, Suite 336, Apopka, Florida, 407-494-1471. thamptonlaw.com Yeah. I love my HBCU. Uh, and boy, boy, I love it, love it. Yeah. I love it, love it. Yeah, yeah. I love my HBCU. And man, yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. Man. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I tune into the HBCU Sports Lab to see if my team won a law. If they lost, I'm quiet as a mouth. But if they won, she tab. Yeah. Uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Dr. Cavill, yeah. he know what he be talking about. Talkin Mike about. and Charles, Talk. they know what they be talking about. Yeah. Talkin they about. compress the analytic data with the hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they wanna lose, yeah. and who the boss, who the boss. So listen to Professor, uh, yes sir, yes, and pay attention, boy. cause he gon' teach the lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Bill inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Mike Washington is still out on assignment. I'm going to have to do a health check on Mike. I ain't <laughs> lie. They keeping that busy out there. You understand? I need to check on my boy. Make sure he all good. With that being said, Charles, how you doing today? Doing well, Doc. It's a beautiful uh, afternoon here in Houston. Caught a little bit of baseball today. Caught a little bit of uh, Texas Southern and Grambling over there at McGregor Park. A nice little three-game series over there this weekend. So looking forward to a little baseball, a little golf this weekend. I heard it was a good one. As you left out of there, it was 3-3, so um, they were getting down for this. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was uh, Grandma uh, jumped out, uh, uh, or I should say Texas Southern jumped out 1-0, then Grandma came back at the bottom of the end and had a three-run shot over the right field fence, almost hit the tennis court over there. And then uh, Texas Southern was able to come back in the successes of innings and, and played a couple runs. So uh, when I was still over at the park, it was 3-3. So we'll see where it is uh, by the end of the show. What inning did you leave? Uh, seventh inning. Oh, man. So it's a good one. It's going down to the wire. Good pitching. With that being said, let me do a proper introduction. Welcome, welcome to episode 496. 496. Countdown to 500 of Inside the HBC Sports Lab radio show and podcast. The show that's covering the sporting HBC dash for all things HBC sports. For institutions large and small. All from HBC sports culture, HBC athletic aesthetics to facilitate the story of HBC athletic programs in the business of HBC sports. I'm your host, Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, along with my co-host, Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. Filming from our home studios and sending a signal live to Case Wage 1230 AM studios with the Radio Hall of Famer, Multi Hall of Famer, Ralph Cooper, in the beautiful home of Texas Southern University from Houston, Texas. Well, you know, that Dallas being said, speaking. Charles, um, intriguing, intriguing. Well, let, let me let me jump in real quick and I'll say this. And we we shot him out every every show, Ralph Cooper, but uh on yesterday. He's celebrating 55 years of uh being on the air here in Houston, uh, living legend in terms of uh, what Ralph Cooper has done uh, in terms of uh, bringing to us uh, HBCU athletics and, and athletics in general 
uh, in and around Houston. But uh, I definitely want to sh uh, shout out to Ralph for all he's done with regards to radio. Shout out to Ralph. Tell him again how many number of years he's been doing radio. 55 years on the radio. 55 years on the radio, Doc. Mm, I mean, some of us hadn't even seen 55 years. That unto itself is amazing, but he started back in March of 1969. Yeah, um, I see Emmett puts that out there, and usually we talk more sports, but uh, don't know how this may affect sports at Tennessee State. But yeah, I've heard the news Tennessee's governor dissolves the Tennessee State Board. Uh, I've followed it for a while. I get over there with Tennessee State. I even They even allow me to check out the board material. And so they've been talking about it while quite um, disheartening to hear that news. You see, uh, but when you get these ties and you start seeing things that just don't make sense, mm -hmm. you're seeing the other things that happened in Tennessee State with the uh, three lawmakers, two of them black, and how they were treated. And you come back and you see the president, everybody, for the most part, seen her doing really well. They asked, and you have the report with all eight public HBCUs, how much independent states are owning this in a billion of dollars. Their board asked for the billion dollars. Um, you see, they all of a sudden see that they're going to give them a small percentage of that in, in the millions. And next thing you know, you hear this fiasco talking about how they're going to make sure they tell them. And then you have a question about how they do finances. It really disturbs you. Um, well, some good reporting out there in terms of what that looks like. Quite frustrating to see that going on. So I did want to speak on that. Quite frustrating, but I think the playbook is out there, Dr. Ville. And I think uh, we've talked about it. I mean, uh, there's an attack on DEI in the state of Florida. Uh, and wh where do you hurt people? You hurt them in their pocketbooks. So athletes, why go to the state of Florida or athletes? Why go to the state of uh, Tennessee? I mean, we look across the South. We, we see these legislators uh, or, or Mississippi. Mississippi. Uh, exactly. I mean, uh, so, I mean, there is a, a, a playbook on how to handle uh, an attempt to turn back the clock, if you will. So. Well said. I'm glad you said that. Today's episode of Inside the HBC Sports Lab is sponsored by THD Agency is a company that provides sporting and education consulting and data analytics. Uh, with that being said, we do have some basketball news kind of close, close out. There's one team that is still bouncing the basketball uh, in terms of that, and it happens to be a women's team, North Carolina a t Aggies. We talked about on Tuesday how they won their game and they're moving forward in the WNIT tournament. But with that said, Norfolk played yesterday, Norfolk mm -hmm. State. Ends the season with the win, Charles. Norfolk State yeah. overcoming a big deficit. Uh, when I seen early in that game and called it, uh, I was quite nervous, particularly what happened on Tuesday. We'll let you share some updates on the Langston side of things. Um, but they win the CIT championship, come back. They were losing at 10 at half, but they dug a bigger hole, cut it down. I think they were down 14, 15 before that. They cut it down to 10 at half and really held them to under 30 points in the second half, 20-some points, um, and put up 40 of their own and one going away, 75 to 67, as they defeat Purdue Fort Wayne. Uh, big win for the Spartans. Co college Insider Tournament, CIT Championship. I watched it as they even cut down the net, so I really thought they did a good job. Great fan support out there. Um, they got the bye early round. And um, in the second round, they played Alabama A&M in the semifinals, which allowed them to even the series. There were five games played between Swack and Miak. I told you a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. Five of those games were in the preseason, one in the postseason. Swack had came out of that three and two. Uh, and Norfolk State got a chance to even things up in terms of going three and three in that matchup. And mm -hmm. so that was a big deal in mm -hmm. terms of what that looks like. Uh, also, just to add a little bit on to that, is that means that the MEAC went 5-5. Five and five. They went 500 also against all HBCUs. This is the men's program. SWAC went 6-4. and four. They fall with that added loss, 6-4 and four overall against all HBCUs, but obviously finished 500 against the MEAC. Women finished uh, 500 for the MEAC overall HBCU programs. This is Division One now against other Division One programs. They go 0-1 in the SWAC. SWAC goes 
one and oh and five hundred also against um, the overall D one HBCU competition. So fascinating year when you look at that. It goes down. One of the last things we talked about coming out of Tuesday. How many points will no folk be able to push in terms of first place votes? Could they pick off two from Gramlin? It'll be fascinating as we unveil that on Tuesday. Yeah. And they pick off two votes from Gramlin uh, to leapfrog them essentially what they do because they're currently sitting at two. Um, again, they're one of the few programs, maybe the only program, depending on what AT women do. Particularly on the men's side, they're going to be the only program to end the season with a win. Mm -hmm. Everybody can usually say that, but they'll be able to say that. So that's big news. Again, with the lengths and loss, they can't even say that at the mid-major level, as close as they came. So I'm fascinated to see how this jumped out. Had a couple of comments on X, formerly known as Twitter, about that thought process. person said they could see uh, it going a different way. Some people would be upset. I'm sure they will, but it'd be fascinating just to see how it comes out. I'm not sure yet. Again, I don't, I'm going to have my vote in, but uh, other folks, I don't control their vote, so we'll see what that looks like when it comes out. <laughs> Emmett Jones says, congratulations, Norfolk State HBCU's basketball champions. Yes, they are. Oh, we'll see what okay. The Dr. Yeah, we'll see say. what that looks like. That doesn't come out to Tuesday. So, you know, <laughs> hold your horses. Hold your horses. <laughs> get in there. Any early thoughts that you have on that before we get into it a little more? Very impressive. Norfolk State down by 18 and be able to fight back and uh, win the championship. Uh, but I think we touched on it on Tuesday. I mean, hanging banners, that, that means something. Uh, so Norfolk State, they get to hang a uh, CIT uh, championship banner. Uh, and like you say, you build a campaign about around. We, we hang banners around here. We win championships. So I think that was huge. That's huge yeah. from a branding standpoint for Norfolk State. I will say this. Grambling gets to say they're going to hang a banner, too. They have a first four. They get a victory in the NCAA tournament. They get a uh, hang a banner that they won regular season and postseason championship. So they hope they'll likely hang those banners and the NCAA tournament. So they'll hang three banners. Mm -hmm. just, just like Norfolk State, they will hang regular season championship and a C CIT championship banner. So uh be interesting to see what that means. We'll, 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 we'll see. Uh, I, I, I'm, just yeah, saying. I'm, all, I'm already looking forward to Tuesday. I want to see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, give us your updates in terms of Langston. Obviously, that game on Tuesday uh, didn't go quite the same go as well. Uh, they literally are up six points uh, with just over a minute left in the game and the ball. Um, and the ball slips out of the guard play as he towards to go to basket. As they run down the clock, which you would certainly think they should do, he has to put up a shot just before the clock ends and doesn't touch the rim. So you get a shot clock violation, and the rest does not go their way literally until the end of the game where they ultimately lose with um, Friedman. Freed Hardeman, I should say, goes on a 10-point run to win the game. Charles? Yeah, I mean, I think you touched on it. I mean uh... – Freed Hardeman, you can make this a great case. They snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. I mean, they were a down 67-61 with about 55 seconds left to go in that game. And, uh, you know, that HBCU pride was welling up. You know, you got to – you were looking at the Langs and fans. They were cheering. The, the bench was up. Everything was going – Hep Band was doing what they do with the Hep Band yeah, was doing were. what they were doing. And then it happened. And it, and it happened like a – almost like watching a, a, a car wreck of some sort, you know, in the next 55 seconds, uh, Freed Hardman, they, they, they pressed, they were able to get some turnovers. They were get able to get some and ones and, and you looked up and, and the lead had evaporated and it was uh, amazing to watch a uh, tough, tough way to end the season. Uh, Langston, we had talked about them all throughout the season uh, in terms of being one of the, uh, not just best mid-major program, but one of the best HBC programs we've watched all season. I mean, tremendous season, uh, 34 wins going into that game, and uh, just a tough way to lose it. Uh, they were literally 55 seconds away from the NAIA championship, but uh, we salute them on a tremendous title run, and it just came up short just there at the end. Yeah, I even had to get my, my buddies involved, uh, our frat brothers, uh, Mark Fleming, Langston alumni, along with uh, brother coach Tony Green, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, that coach, coach is as assistant coach to Baylor. Uh, and I got them as they were in the semifinals and reached out to them. We connected way back when we were in school and Tony and I, I uh, connected at a party in Langston that I didn't realize uh, that uh, he threw, that Mark uh, took oh, wow. me to. And we were going up there with Prairie View in those days, and it's lasted ever since then. But then Tony and I reconnect uh, through um, uh, another frat brother of ours that's over as assistant coach uh, at Alcorn State, uh, one of the Alabama a and that's in the group text uh, that we have, and, and shout out to them as I've I met him through the twins and things of that nature. Well, they were at that time coaching in the Red River Athletic Conference uh, at Langston. Tony Green was there, assistant coach, coaching the women's basketball uh, under uh, the guidance of the current athletic director uh, at Langston. And then you had a coach over there at Texas College, had a coach at Wiley College. So it was fascinating when Jarvis Christian, they Tony Green connects. Uh, and comes a Houston coach at Grambling, then moves over here at Texas Southern University under leg- legendary coach Cynthia Cooper. Uh, and then he moves around, goes up north a little bit, Mississippi, finally lands over there at the SWAC in, in terms of what that looks like. So that's fascinating uh, when you talk about um, all uh, the things going on there. So I was really connected with that thing. So I got them all into it, and they're hyped and ready to go back. Uh, Tony does a great job when he goes up there and celebrates the kid after the team and the coach after a tough loss and uh, donates a thousand dollars to the program to show his pride and make sure people understand that this is the time they need even more support moving forward. Mm-hmm. I even donated uh, to Langston because I just like the way he did that. But yeah, that's, that's a connection. And then you go through that. I'm going through my different groups, a group that I'm involved that in, uh, has more MEAC fans in it, generally speaking, that's on X, formerly known as Twitter, in the group chat. And I got another group, group chat in terms of uh, the group me, which are previous folks of the Honor Don that still uh, honor Eric. And those obviously are mostly SIEC with some CIAA fans. They own their cheering for Langston. Uh, you got your Facebook group, uh, people that – on there cheering for Langston. You got our BCSN group cheering for Langston. So I'm going through all these different groups <laughs> uh, that are connected to HBCUs and different facets, and they're all on the chain. Everybody's excited. And I hadn't seen the air pop, as you talked about, in that ma- uh that were fascinating and focus on the HBCU culture, if you would, uh, in terms of celebrating, no matter if they were part of CIAA, SIAC, MEAC, SWAC, different ways that they were on social media, they were all in. Obviously, those that are part of HBCU game day and their news component, what they do, HBCU sports and the site that they have in the blog, all these folks are connected and ready to jump out of their seat. And it just does not quite happen. So it was almost a study that I look at in terms of their fandom and how they were let down. I could not even sleep. You know, people were talking about they were this and that. I could not sleep. I woke up that morning uh, in the middle of the night and just const- consternation, if you would. And then it got worse. I got this dog that bought. in the back and you sleep you, you're good you don't worry about what you know Mark. and it was i was like it took me an hour to get back to sleep i was just was like, <laughs> oh, nah. <laughs> i could not play back that last minute i kept playing back that last minute I and i pitched you because we on our group and he's like man i can't get it on espn so i'm taking shots of the game in that last minute mm-hmm. uh, through the phone and then posting it on my other ipad so he can see it and then mm-hmm. i was just doing it in clips so every time I play clock stop i would stop it and then bring it back on. So it was like a slow death. Wow. In terms yeah. of what took place. And so yeah. it, it was, was just crazy. It was, it was, it was tough. tough. It was yeah. tough. With that being said. But we'll get back into it. Let's get a little baseball. I'll take our first break. We'll come back on the other side. Um, see if you have any final thoughts. And then we're getting into some baseball. Before we do that, um, did want to talk about intriguing football is still out there getting into spring football. Morgan State, the whole joint spring football practice with the University of Maryland. I thought that was kind of interesting. See how that happened, what took place, something to think about. North Carolina Central has field turf 
O'Kelly Riddick uh, Stadium upgrades for HBCU game day. I got a chance uh, to see the new turf at Prairie View. We'll talk a little bit more about that in the baseball segment as they took on Texas Southern, tell you how that went. Um, so University of Florida assistant hired at Hampton. Uh, and so the women's coach at Hampton University has a basketball coach now. So fascinating to see with that. And then obviously the third annual HBC All-Star Game announces the rosters and coaches and honorees from the SWAC, MEAC, CIAA, SIC, and Independence. So fascinating to see how that will happen. That is in Arizona where the Final Four is this year. It's at Grand Canyon University, uh, Global Credit Union Arena at 1 p.m. Uh, so it'll be fascinating to see how that goes down. Excited. Remember, just last year was here in Houston with the Final mm -hmm. Four and was played at Texas Southern University. Huge crowds came out for that, so it'll be fascinating to see how things and it's broken down into Team Rick Mahorn and Team Ben Wallace in regards to the coaches Lavelle Mooton uh, with North Carolina Central, Alfred Jordan, uh, Clark Atlanta University program men's basketball pro. Um, so Coach Johnny Jones. Uh, on the opposite side, uh, and Jason Armstrong and Coach Johnny Jones, obviously of Texas Southern, Jason Armstrong of Lincoln University, and that's the Pennsylvania out of CIAA. With that, let's take our first break. We'll come back on the other side, get into some of these baseball updates. We have some rainout games. Looks like some teams decided to push it to get these games in. We'll give you some updates to what that looks like as Brian is sharing us, and we'll provide some of that stuff on the other side. Stick with us as we take this first break. We'll come back and give you some more updates. Since 2002, Empowerment Resources, Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, and Parenting Education Coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. The human voice has always connected audiences with experiences. Major brands all across America have trusted Kevers Voice time and time again. Conversational. Powerhouse, intelligent, and sincere. That's the voice you need for your creative marketing process. K E A V E R S V O I C E dot com. Covers voice, covers voice, covers voice dot com. Always on, all the time. Nope. Nope. Come on, him. Ooh, I like him. The Quicker Picker Upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the Quicker Picker Upper. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge, featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. That's www.slowburnwaco.com. Compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they're going to tell you if your team, if they want to love that. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor Yes, sir. Yes, sir. and pay attention because he's going to teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Ville's Inside the HBC Sports Lab. Charles, I want to get your thoughts in terms of SWAC baseball the last couple of weeks. You get in your second weekend of games. Uh, mm. We'll break down in terms of what that schedule looked like um, and some scores this past weekend. I kind of started all on the home side of things. Uh, right here, here in uh, greater Houston area, including Prairie View with that. Yeah, Texas Southern going out to uh, Prairie View for those matchups. Mm -hmm. Texas Southern uh, that went down to Southern the previous weekend, got that victory over there. The other games got rained out. Uh, but they headed down uh, with a collision course with the rivals of Prairie View uh, that had swept Pine Bluff uh, that same weekend that they – 
in Texas Southern took on, if you would, um, their programs there in terms of Southern, Prairie View and Texas Southern. Texas Southern took two out of three, won the game 13-3 on uh, Friday, won an 8-6 close game. My, my understanding, Coach Mike Rob got tossed out of that game. Hey, he was he was uh, working the ups today. So uh, <laughs> eight six getting done. Uh, but he sounded like he got upset, I guess, on Sunday and put in some more punishment as uh Texas Southern had a 13 run inning. Uh one player there on the team hit a grand slam, came back in the same inning. When I say came back, it was the same inning and hit a double. Uh, they scored two bases loaded again. This time he had a double, had two more uh, RBIs. So he had six RBIs in an in inning. Charles, you're talking about a day. And if the guy uh, that was on first was a little faster, the way the ball was hit, you could argue that uh, that, that guy should have scored there. They played it safe because he was a little slower running around that corner. Mm. Um, so he could have had a home run in a double with three RBIs. But until he got two, I guess six RBIs in the inning is not bad. Uh, any, any thoughts uh, in terms of hearing that outcome before you get into some other matchups there? Well, I mean, uh, thus far, I mean, when you take a look at the standings, I mean, uh, you got uh, Texas Southern impressive weekend against Prairie View, but, but Southern and Grandma, they've jumped out over in the West. They're undefeated thus far in the West. Uh, Grandma 5-0 and coming into this weekend versus Texas Southern. Uh, Southern at 3-0. and uh, and then you got uh, Prairie View sitting right there at four and two, uh, in, in Texas Southern two and one. You got some some rain out days, but you know we talk about the the Swack East all the time uh, with regards to Jackson State, Bethune Cookman, FAMU, and Alabama State. And uh, Jackson State has jumped out, uh, nineteen and five record. Got a couple of um, impressive wins, midweek wins uh, over Butler and the University of Memphis, but nineteen and five thus far in the season and a sweep of Alabama State. Uh, so that's something that's really kind of turned my heads. And, and then when you take a look at the team overall, uh, it's a very new team, uh, but already they're raking. I mean, they're batting 315 as a team. Uh, they're tops uh, in the league in terms of stolen bases. They've already stolen 88 bases. And then a uh, pretty good fielding team, uh, one of the top fielding teams in the SWAC. So, um, so far, you know, early first poll of the season, uh, Jackson State and, and Bethune Cookman, are, are looking really, really good on in the East. And then uh, on the opposite side, Grambling and uh, Southern, both undefeated thus far in the West. So it, it, it's, it's uh, taking shape a little bit differently than I kind of expected thus far. Well, let me give you these outcomes as we get into these matchups um, so you can get a little more detail in particular of just, you know, particular teams as you did a, a really good job in terms of giving an overview of last week coming into this week um, in terms of total records. I want to break down uh, what took place for those that uh, just taking a glossary look at baseball. On Friday, I told you what happened between Prairie View and Texas Southern. You actually had the rivalry games in a lot of ways. When you had uh, Alabama A&M versus Alabama State, you had FAMU versus Bethune-Cookman. Um, both teams, FAMU came in there looking good as well as Bethune-Cookman, so that was a huge series. Mm -hmm. um, Alabama State uh, played A&M close, 3-2 uh, in terms of that matchup uh, on Friday. You had Bethune-Cookman uh, defeating FAMU and holding, holding them scoreless 6-0 to zero yeah. in terms of that matchup there. And then you had a West Division matchup between Southern and Alcorn State. Southern uh, got that 10-2 to 2 in terms of the Friday matchups. Then you move into Saturday, and you have some problem uh, with the water in terms of mm. rain. Watch some of these games here in terms of what happened uh, on those matchups on, on Saturday uh, as only a couple of games could get in there. So I uh, wanted to – give you some scores of what that looks like in terms of um, Alabama A&M and state playing games there. Computer a little slow here in terms of giving you those updates. Let me see if I can get this going here a little bit. One second. Well, I, I mean, when, and, and you mentioned uh, Bethune Cookman and Florida A&M, and, and that was uh, a game that I was kind of particularly paying attention to, especially the, fr the Friday starters, uh, Tanner Bocabello, 
Uh, I believe he was a swag pitcher of the week this past week. He started off 3-0 thus far for Bethune Cookman, but he went up against Caleb Granger, which is one of the arms uh, that uh, FAMU is uh, really going to be relying on uh, this upcoming season. So uh, that was a, a game that Friday, last Friday, that really kind of turned my head because you shut out FAMU. Uh, that's saying something because they can hit the baseball and they've already proved thus far that they uh, have the ability to do that. I think they lead the swack at home runs early uh, here in the season. So uh, they got a lot of guys uh, up and down that lineup that can go deep with the baseball. And we saw that last season, uh, in, especially in the swack tournament, when those guys got hot, uh, they were knocking the ball all over the place over there at Georgia Tech. To your point with Bethune-Cookman, they got the game on Saturday too. Uh, that one went in the innings. They got some big hits late in that game on Saturday to defeat FAMU. And so I'm looking to Sunday. is like, is Bethune Cookman going to sweep FAMU to open up this series down in Daytona? No, mm -hmm. uh, not quite like that. As I'm coming home, I'm listening to that game. As it goes in the inning, extra innings, uh, just like Saturday's contest. But this time, uh, Bethune Cookman had a chance late in that game in terms of what that looks like. Uh, and couldn't scratch over the runs. Fam, you comes back in the top of that 11 and gets a run on the board as they win uh, to make sure they avoid that sweep as they lose on Saturday, 7-6. to six. Uh, Jackson State jumps on the Mississippi Valley, winning 14-4. to four. Uh, Gramlin uh, is beating up on Arkansas Pine Bluff, 6-3, and they actually get two games in on Saturdays. The other one, they come back and defeat Pine Bluff, 7-5. to five. Uh, I told you about Prairie View getting Texas Southern, 8-6. to six. Southern Pounds, Alcorn State, the Braves, 14-7. Uh, and uh, Jackson State takes two on Saturday away from the Valley, 8-5 to five in that second contest. Alabama A&M gets one from Alabama State. That kind of surprised that, me about that, that surprised being on the board. Yeah. Low yeah. scoring game. You don't see Alabama a uh, Alabama State putting up a lot of runs. Uh, we told you the first was 3-2. You like, okay. And you come back, and A&M wins this one 3-1. Um, so that was fascinating when you talk about Saturday. I'm sure that kind of surprised you uh, with uh, Alabama A&M getting one from Alabama State. What are your thoughts in terms of it seems like Alabama State may be struggling a little bit? Uh, Jackson State would say, hey, no, we, we got ours, but they took two of them. One of them ran and rained out. Uh, but then you come back. Hey, yeah, it's a rivalry game. Maybe that's a little bit of it, but you lose one early. So they just won in um, – Three on the early season there. Yeah, I mean, for Alabama State to have lost three games already in swag, uh, swag play, that is completely surprising. And they they brought back quite a bit from uh, last uh, season uh, in terms of uh, 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 both pitching and hitting. Uh, so, you know, it's a surprising to see uh, Alabama State thus far uh, basically sitting at fourth in the swag standings, looking up at FAMU, Bethune, Cookman, and Jackson State. Uh, very interesting series this weekend. Jackson State goes to Tallahassee to take on FAMU, so very interested in those scores this weekend. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that that's completely surprising. Um, Jackson State doesn't, doesn't go to Montgomery and sweep Alabama State. You just don't see that uh, in recent years. So, uh, that was very surprising to see that thus far. And then, like you said, they dropped one Alabama A&M. That was totally shocking. They do bounce back it's on Sunday. They shut them out 7-0. So um, now they're 2-3 and three on the season. Uh, you got Gramlin that just rolls over Pine Bluff. Uh, people putting up a lot of runs against uh, Gramlin as Prairie View. Uh, put a, um, had multi-games with those crooked letters, as they said, getting up into teens uh, for those games. Gramlin won 17-2. Uh, FAMU does get the win in 11, 3-2 uh, over Bethune Cookman to avoid the sweep. Prairie View pounds, I mean, Texas Southern pounds Prairie View 17-3. Jack State gets a close win over Valley, but they get it done, 5-4. and four. Southern uh, puts up 19 over Alcorn State, 19-4. So coming in, uh, coming out of that weekend, Jackson State is leading the East, 5-0. and oh. uh, I'm not sure people saw this. You talked about them being 19-5. Early on, getting a couple of good other Division One wins. Um, they have won three straight games. Uh, Bethune-Cookman, uh, in terms of their win streak, Bethune-Cookman is 4-1 and one on the season. Uh, FAMU at 4-2. and two. Alabama State, 2-3. and three. You talked about Alabama a and at 1-5. Mississippi at 0-4. Oh Going to the West, 
Southern is three and zero. I mean, three and one with their loss uh, to uh, Texas Southern in their matchup. Grambling is five and zero in terms of one rainout game there. Prairie View is four and two. Texas Southern in terms of three and one in terms of getting one in Southern and then two down in Prairie View taking two and three in that season. Uh, could be interesting what's going on now. Find out who came out of that game. Alcorn State at one and five, and Pine Bluff at zero and seven, in terms of those matchups. Uh, struggling early there. Any thoughts in terms of these standings? I know it's early; it's just second week. Anything stands out particularly? Obviously, you mentioned a little bit about Alabama State. Anything else outside of that? Uh, and I always take a look at this with regards to swag baseball. But the uh, they they normally lead the country in stolen bases. Uh, you know, it's just the brand of baseball that we see in the swag. But Jackson State thus far, uh, 99 attempts, they swiped 89 bags. So that's that that has to be, you know, I haven't checked the the the, the national standards, but that has to be right up there because they uh, are, 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 are by quite some bit uh, uh, ahead in terms of uh, stolen bases in the swag, uh, 89 or 99. Like I said, it's it's been uh, for them to be uh, pretty much a new team, they have two or three hitters batting over 400 uh, as a team. They batting 315. Uh, so uh, you know, it's 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 a team that I I did not expect 19 and five thus far in the season through the first quarter poll of the season. No, no, that's a good one, Jackson State. Uh, it's no way I thought that. I I knew they would play tenacious uh, baseball. I know they would be in some matchups, but I can't say that I would give them the credit they would be undefeated, particularly knowing that their first game series was against Alabama State. Uh, I yeah. believe they could have won the series, um, but to take two of them, um, obviously third game wasn't played there. Uh, right. And so right. you don't know what happened to that. But basically they come out of there undefeated. I don't think I would have thought about that, that they would have came out of their game undefeated, um, whether it was 2-0 and oh, or three and zero in terms of that matchup. So wanted to give some credit there in terms of what that looks like. Let's take our next break. We'll come back on the other side and talk about some of the games this weekend. A couple of teams are playing early, starting things on Thursday, so they can get that uh, Easter Sunday off. Uh, that included uh, Prairie. View. I mean, that included Texas Southern Grambling. Obviously, should be fascinating to see what takes place there. Both of those are playing some really good baseball. So stick with us on the other side. We'll tell you some of the other matchups to keep your eyes on early in the season. Itchy, squirmy, scratchy, family not getting clean? Get Charmin Ultra Strong. Go get them. It just cleans better. With a diamond weave texture, your family can use less while still getting clean. Goodbye, itchy squirm. Hello, clean bottom. <laughs> <laughs> we all go. Why not enjoy the go with Charmin? At Hampton Law, our primary goal is to provide non-traditional yet effective solutions and redefine the approach to client legal concerns. As your trusted legal advisor, we believe in sophisticated, personalized services that eliminate the confusion and complexity sometimes associated with legal matters. Our high standard for client care and concern, coupled with our extensive legal knowledge and skills, make Hampton Law a resource focused on the protection of the client's interest and overall goals. We value our clients and truly enjoy working with them. Visit thamptonlaw.com to conveniently schedule an appointment online. Tamika Hampton Esquire, 1631 Rock Springs Road, Suite 336, Apopka, Florida, 407 407- 494-1471. THamptonLaw.com. Nope. Nope. You want him? Ooh, I like him. Quick, the quicker picker upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the quicker picker-upper. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High-quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slowburn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge. 
featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. That's www.slowburnwaco.com. When it comes to professional learning, teachers deserve better. From the leader in online learning, Stride brings you the Stride Professional Development Center, an on-demand library of mobile-friendly courses that gives teachers choice and flexibility, allowing them to learn anytime and anywhere. Our dynamic courses provide bite-sized learning and help educators advance their knowledge while also gaining professional development hours. It's time you take charge of your learning. Visit us today to get started. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they wanna lose, yeah, and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor Yes Sir, yes, and pay attention, boy. cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. This is Doctor Mills inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. Mike Washington is out on assignment, talking a little HBC baseball Division One, mainly from the SWAC perspective. So I want to talk a little bit about the matchups coming in this weekend. And everybody is starting their games on Thursday to make sure they get outside of that Easter Sunday weekend, which uh, I love the fact that they've moved this. We saw this trend a couple of years ago where a couple of teams pushed it. I, I noticed uh, first seeing it here out of the greater Houston. But um, now to see all the teams doing, I think it's a great move. Uh, with that being said, we told you about the Grambling Texas Southern matchup. Uh, Alcorn State uh, is traveling to Pine Bluff. Um, so they have a game that started today at four. Yeah, Prairie View at Texas Southern. I'm really fascinated to see what takes place there. Can Prairie View bounce back? Southern obviously had a big uh, weekend last weekend, so I'm sure they feel a little better about themselves. Obviously, they dropped that one uh, the first week um, to Texas Southern, got the rest of them rained out. Mm. So we couldn't get a great indication of just what that meant in terms of Southern or oh, Texas Southern. Uh, some people thought Southern probably started a little slow in terms of what they did in non-conference play, but mm-hmm. uh, it's conference time, and they usually find a way to wake up. You got a good series here, Charles. I know you got one eagle eye on this. Jackson State at FAMU. Uh, yeah. We got an update in here with FAMU uh, up big in that game, 7-0 to zero in the oh, top. Wow. The is a score that we have there. Uh, we have Alabama AM and and Bethune-Cookman. It's early. It's early. Let me say that again. But a little surprise. Alabama and them up on Bethune Cookman two to zero. Wow. Okay. Top of the first, though. Top of the first. Top of the first. <laughs> Top of the first. Top of the first. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, but the fact they jumped out of there, hey, uh, that says something there. And then you have Alabama State and Mississippi Valley State. Now, this is a intriguing one to me. I think we'll get an indication to see is Alabama just in terms of the competition they played early. Uh, Alabama a and looks to be better in terms of what they came in this year. Obviously, Jackson State is solid, but Valley is still working uh, to work around in the shape. So I'm looking at the indication not only to see if Alabama State can get these wins, uh, they certainly need them to kind of put themselves back in the mix, uh, uh, particularly with Alabama A&M right behind them. Remember, only the top four teams go. That's the Swag Championship, and I know it's really early. But this is an indication to let you know in terms of, of if not only they get those three, you know, how they fare against Valley to me when the mm-hmm. matchup. Mm-hmm. You expect to maybe Valley give you a one good game uh, where they yeah. close out. And you got to find a way to still beat them in that game. Yeah. Because uh, <laughs> you don't, can't afford to drop it with all the other competition you got. But also in the rest of the games that you jump on them and win, you want to kind of see you can put up some numbers and beat them solidly. So if this is – uh, indication here. So that's one I, uh, in a weird way, that I have on Alabama State and Valley game. Yeah. Give me your thoughts on a couple of these matchups. Which one are you looking at and why? Uh, Jackson State FAMU uh, is intriguing. Uh, I think, uh, like I said, the, the hot start that Jackson State has had thus far uh, in SWAC play. And then we talk about the gauntlet that is the SWAC East. Uh, these are uh, of the t- Top four teams in the Swag East. These are two of the four uh, playing this weekend in Jackson State at FAMU. Uh, Grandma State and Texas Southern is intriguing. Uh, and if Thursday's any indication, it's going to be a great uh, weekend crowd uh, for the, uh, this series. A lot of uh, a few Grandma alums out there at McGregor today cheering on their team. So uh, looking forward to that series the rest of the week. And, uh, uh, and I, I think now that you've 
mentioned Alabama A&M. Uh, they, they took one from Alabama State. This is intriguing uh, with them going to Daytona Beach this weekend uh, to take on Bethune Cookman. Let's see uh, what Alabama A&M is really about. Let's see if, if they can make any noise. And instead of us talking about the top four teams in the Swag East, uh, we might have to include one more. They got an impressive showing down there this weekend at Daytona. Good stuff, good stuff there. Just want to put this out there before we go into our last segment uh, where you get to ask the question of the day. We're going to get that in here a little early, uh, make sure we cover it. But um, give you some uh, Northeast Conference with the former MEAC members playing. I want to give you some uh, updates on that. You have Delaware State at Norfolk State uh, with some game with the series there. Um, they're playing two uh, on Friday there, uh, but you have Coppin State is on the road to Lemoyne, and you have Maryland Eastern Shore, if you would, on the road also at Fairleigh Dickinson's in terms of those matchups. Obviously, want to give an update in terms of North Carolina a t It's really playing some good baseball in terms of what they're looking like in the coastal in terms of their matchup uh, as – they continue to get it done talking about what looks like in the big nine, um, in the black college nine top 10 that came up last week. Uh, before we do that, you have UNC Wilmington at North Carolina. And it'll be interesting to see if those bats and stay hot, really good pitching for AT in terms of what they looks like. Uh, when you talk about the March 17th release of the top poll, North Carolina AT. Is at the top of the head pole. They've been swinging yeah, back playing some exactly. football. Um, as what they did last year, they probably surprised a lot of folks. Uh, you had them down in the series where they lost the opener to Prairie View in that match, a really close game. They bounce back and get two and pound Southern uh, in that matchup when you talk about MLB uh, HBCU Classic Series. So they took two out of three there. Prairie View went 3-0. and oh. uh, So fascinating to see what took place. And know some of those matchups, but let me give you the top 10 in terms of the law school, large school for black college nines. This is March 17th. Again, that's number 10, Mississippi Valley State, and number nine, Grambling State, and number eight, Texas Southern University, number seven, Norfolk State, and number six, Alabama State. Top five, FAMU, at number four, Prairie View, at number three, Bethune Cookman, and number two, Jackson State. Number one, North Carolina a &T. Let me give you a caveat here. This goes back to 17. So if you've had a series play midweek games as well, and uh, obviously some of them actually playing some games today. So you had a, you know, a couple of series, four or five games that have been played since that's been released. So fascinating to see there. But I do like to kind of get that update as they do every two weeks. And then they get deeper in the series where they start doing a week in terms of Black College 9. Small school division. Get some love for these guys here. Uh, top 10, Lane College. Number nine, Miles College. Number eight, Jarvis Christian. Number seven, West Virginia State. Number six, Bluefield State. Top five programs, Charles. There were Waters down there in Florida. Mm. Number four, Talladega College. Number three, Savannah State. And number two, Florida Memorial. Number one, Alabama State. I'm going to talk about some of these NIA programs over here in the state of Texas. You got to get the weight up a little bit, man. You, you, you the, not getting it done. With that being said, any any comments you said when we talk about these independent uh, poll rankings uh, programs in terms of what they're getting done thus far early part of the season as they start to get in the conference race as well? Uh, give me the top three again. The top three. Uh, top, three said, just, the, uh, top three things in the mid-major or major? Mid-major, uh, uh, mid mid-major. Mid -major. Mid-major, number three, Savannah State. Okay. Number two, Florida Memorial, another Florida school. Yeah. So Florida has an NIA and a Division II program in the top five. Mm -hmm. We saw what they do in the Black College World Series. They get down mm -hmm. uh, as they've won the last two, basically, uh, uh, at least going down the stretch. And number one is Albany State. AD okay. has told us a little bit about keeping your eyes on Albany State as they get yeah. down. Because they're getting some – Albany State is getting some national love uh, with regards to uh, uh, other baseball rankings and whatnot. But uh, that's so far so good in terms of uh, 
uh, some programs doing some big things with regards to baseball. You mentioned Albany State, uh, Savannah State. Huh, something about they're part of Georgia. They they playing some great baseball over that way, huh? <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. Georgia, you're right. They play some good baseball. Fascinating when you talk about that uh, mid-major, what they call small division. Don't always get the kind of love, so it's fascinating there. Before we close this segment, we can give you a update. Final, FAMU 10, JSU 1. It'll be interesting to see, mm. can JSU bounce back tomorrow? Yeah. Uh, or will FAMU continue to roll? Big statement by FAMU. As they kind of bounce Big back statement. after losing two out of three. But Cookman, uh, Jack State came in red hot. Uh, so fascinating to see. Keep our eyes on that. Stick will be back after our last break. We'll come back on the other side. Had a question of the day, and we'll call it the evening. If you think all pads are exactly the same, think again. This is always Ultra Thin's reinvented with the always triple protection system. This pad wicks gushes 90% faster, absorbs even more so you can feel dry, and locks odors in. Rethink your pad for up to 100% leak-free and odor-free comfort with the totally reinvented Always Ultra Thins. This is always like never before. The Cuvée Group is a Florida-based marketing and training consulting firm. We help businesses communicate to their target audience and engage them in conversation. We also help to expand their audiences, which will ultimately result in growth for those organizations. In addition to being a certified constant contact specialist, my colleagues and I are also certified in John Maxwell Leadership Principles. We use these proven principles to conduct workshops, training, and private coaching sessions for individuals and companies looking to take things to the next level. Contact us to schedule a free consultation. Issues today, don't delay, call Cuvay. As technology continues to bring changes to the world of education, it's time we also reimagine teacher professional development. Gone are the days of one-size-fits-all learning that can only be accessed at a specific time and place. The Stride PD Center is an on-demand library of mobile-friendly courses that allow educators to learn anytime and anywhere. Our dynamic courses provide bite-sized learning and help educators advance their knowledge while also gaining professional development hours. The best professional development plans are those that include a level of flexibility and choice for educators. Whether you're a teacher, school, or district, visit us today to take charge of your learning. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they wanna lose, yeah, and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor uh, Yes Sir, yes, sir. and pay attention, Boy, cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Wills inside the HBC Sports Lab. I'd be remiss since we talked all this baseball if I didn't open up with this, uh, with the Houston Astros right here in the backyard, 3 o'clock game. You know, I was going to sneak out to that, see if I could rest you around, but you talked me out of it. It was a priority <laughs> for me to make sure we go over there and see HBC Sports. And uh, I mean, where I was here with a lot of our doctoral students doing their dissertation defense, so I did get to get over there, and I had a graduate meeting with the provost. So I, I stuck to the core and made sure we got the work done. Yankees win uh, 5-4. Juan Soto throws out runner in ninth of Yankees' debut 5-4 win over Astros. Oh, wow. You get the win. So big contest there. Houston jumped out 3-0 in the first inning, uh, put up another run in the second the for their four runs, uh, but they get blanked the rest of the game, including obviously uh, that big um, out in – in the ninth, as they were trying to tie it up, uh, Yankees put up three in the fifth, a solo in the sixth, and another run in the seventh, which ultimately became the winning run there. So just give you some MLB. Shout out to MLB bros uh, as they get it done in terms of what they get done and showing that I have a little skills myself. I know we focus on HBCs, but we can talk a little bit about the pro sports as well. So with that being said, turn it over. I want to show out on the NBA side. I had that as well since we just came out of basketball season and they're getting ready to uh, get into the playoffs uh, in terms of what that looks like. We'll do that on another day. Charles, get your question of the day in before I, I show out too much here. No doubt. Well, let's take a look at it. And here's the question. Uh, Jackson State-UConn women's basketball game was one of the most watched 
of the NCAA tournament last weekend. Uh, UConn's 86-64 win last Saturday over Jackson State. Uh, I averaged 1.1 million uh, on ABC, which was the third most viewed first-round game on record, according to ESPN. And according to ESPN, Doc, 1.5 billion total minutes were viewed uh, on television and streaming platforms during the first round, and that is the most on record in women's tournament history, a 70% increase from last year. And I just want to ask a question in regards to, are, are we uh, in the midst of a renaissance, if you will, uh, in regards to women's basketball? I mean, we've had some iconic eras when you take a look at Pat Summit, Gino Ariema, but uh, this seems a little bit different. I definitely believe it's a little different. Obviously, the focus is on there with great teams, great coaches, but now you're seeing more of an interest of players, um, the second generation of great players. You had a unique environment of what took place coming out of last year with some big games in the uh, Final Four on the women's side that kind of pushed people's interest and saw what could take place. And it looks like ESPN, ABC, other programs, news have kind of doubled down. You had a great regular season in terms of South Carolina, seeing if they can bounce back, uh, really playing some good basketball, obviously. With Caitlin out there, what she's doing, the Storms. And then the other thing that I thought was really nice is the fact that you have some freshmen. Uh, Juju, uh, USC, uh, freshman over there at South Carolina. Um, and then you break that down in terms of what you see in the SWAC, and you see SWAC programs doubling up. Jackson State uh, bouncing back after losing in the semifinals a year ago to go undefeated in the regular season, go undefeated in the tournament, get some big regular season victories. Uh, and I think all that galvanized with the HBCU fandom, uh, mm. you don't just go to Jackson State. You bring that whole culture with you. Uh, UConn is Enigma Becker in terms of what she did bouncing back. A lot of people are seeing her. This is a freshman player of the year. Uh, obviously, Caitlin has taken a lot of that, but you had these focus and you had these key matchups. So people are uh, focusing on that, and you double down, and now you shift. So to all these games being on ESPN, this tells you also an indication of just how powerful of putting something on ABC, or your main programs, NBC, CBS, and what it does. So that audience is there to watch it, and you have a lot of people that just focus in the area. You get it done there. So that's part of it too. Well, let me uh, follow up with this question. With the SWAT going to a format next year, of uh, women's basketball on, on a Thursday, Glad you double on a Saturday, and then men back on a Monday. But just to focus for one night completely on women's basketball, how big do you think the scheduling format will be for, especially HBC uh, in the SWAC, I should say? I think it's going to be interesting. You know, I pushed um, for from a television perspective, but I think even now that I've dug in a little deeper, that even from a fan base perspective, you know, SWAC had the program where you had your um, programs, travel partners, if you would, use that framework. So when Prairie View, Texas Southern, they were both home. So you have HBCU fans that would love to see Prairie View or Texas Southern. Um, and some of those fans that were hungry, if they couldn't watch on TV, they might would drive down to Prairie View or vice versa. People on the outside, Cypress, Prairie View area would drive up to Texas Southern if they didn't have the conflict. Well, I was pushing to have Thursday games, but I looked at maybe splitting the Monday games. Um, and so instead of having both Alabama A&M and Alabama State coming down here and they play Saturday and then Sunday and switch it up, that you would have one come in early. So you'd have Alabama A&M come in early on a Thursday, for example, and then they would play Texas Southern uh, in Houston. They would go down to Prairie View on Thursday, and then uh, they would be in Houston – um, on Saturday, while you would have Alabama State at Prairie View on Saturday, and then uh, in, and then Houston on Monday, so you would have both men's and women's. But to your point, I think you get a similar dynamic where now you put the women on showcase with the interest. I think there's enough fans. While people are scared that you're actually asking fans to go see three games, I think they're going to be excited about that. I think you, those fans that are really interested and supported would like to see more of them. And now they get three days a week, every two weeks, if you think about it, right? Mm -hmm. Normally, you have to wait two weeks to get two games. 
now, well, four games. You still get the same four games, but you got three nights you get to get out and out, get to arena to get into that culture that we see, as I showed you with the class question you asked with A&T, that people want to be around that. They want to be sure. excited about that. So regardless if it's the women or the men, but a lot of people kind of being nervous about the fact that the men won't play, I think this thing will actually be more receptive than people originally thought when they just kind of had their gut feeling. So, yeah. I think it's fascinating, particularly when you look at everything surrounding where women's basketball is right now. I think this is a perfect time to make that leap in the focus. So I'm glad you added that question in there uh, from the standpoint that that's a different perspective I've been flirting with a little bit, and I got a chance to kind of voice it to the people to say, uh, don't be too nervous. I think this might work out better than what people originally thought when they're nervous about the fact that you're splitting up the women and asking the fans to do more. I think they'll be welcome. To that opportunity. Sure thing, no doubt. With that being said, let's close it up. Thank you for listening to Inside the HBC Sports Lab. Make sure you share our podcast with your friends and colleagues. I am Dr. Kenyatta, the Dean of HBC Sports, coming from Inside the Lab in the College of HBC Sports with Mike Watson, Charles Bishop. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the show again. We want to thank you for listening to Dr. Liz Inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Watson, Charles Bishop, every Tuesday and Thursday, right here at six o'clock Central Standard Time. Uh, we look forward to next week as we discuss the latest in the lab. Follow me, Dr. Kenyatta Kavil, Kavil, that's D-R-K-E-N-Y-A-T-T-A-C-A-V-I-L on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Um, inside the HBC Sports Lab 1 on X, formerly known as Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube is Inside the HBC Sports Lab. Uh, dream big. Continue to move forward. We will talk with you soon. Charles? Of course. Brian? Lecture. <laughs> Dismiss. He all happy about that 10 1. He, he, he's striking. He still out. got two more games to play. What? <laughs> Tell him. <laughs>